the mood of the studio is really one of withdrawing from the outside world and entering into a world of colour and light and thoughtfulness and contemplation and daydreaming. In the last two years, I have found a way of distancing myself from you know, the ambient world where you have to use your mind in its alpha state and enabling myself to kind of almost to float away. And to do that, I need various props. And one of them is um, classical music. And the other is a sort of sense of peace and tranquility in the studio, so no phones, no interruptions, and a certain type of lighting. And then I can build my dream picture, if you like, with old objects. None of them have any, any value except for the fact that I enjoy painting them with old bits of china, silk flowers, bits of uh, chintz or material I've bought in second-hand shops. And I never tire of rearranging them to create some slightly different variation on the theme. I think I was a, what my wife calls a tragic romantic from an early age. I think a reconnection with French painting and the discovery about 15 years ago of the Nabi group, Gauguin, Le Serrousier, Vuillard, Bonnard, all that lot, sent me into this whole world of colour, which has really dominated my painting for the, certainly the last decade. I think colour works at an emotional level before it works at a descriptive level. So, you know, you see this with the young children. They, they like the colour red, so they like their red bucket or their red jumper because it's red, irrespective of the use that it's going to be put to. And I think we all actually react like this. We are all very moved by colour. It connects at a subconscious level to our emotions. These paintings are, are less and less about reportage and more and more about feelings uh, that are burrowed out from inside to do with um, a romantic view of the world and of um, sort of reverie and memory and contemplation and all those sort of things. And when you're doing it and things are working, it's one of the best experiences that I can have. And I think other artist friends of mine would say the same thing. As a human being, I mean, there is this sense of being connected to something primeval and atavistic and elemental. And, you know, you're kind of getting as near to your maker as you, as you can, I think, as a, as a human being. The worst part of it is when it all goes wrong and you then enter into a sort of spiral of self-doubt and you think that you're worthless and who the hell thinks you can make a living as a painter and um, you know what you've done is inadequate or it's derivative or it's feeble or it's constipated um, you know there's something desperately wrong with it and you loathe yourself for it and you know then you've got to then sort of pull yourself together and sand down the canvas and put a new coat of primer on it and start all over again. Uh, but that is very tough. I mean, what one's really trying to do, I think, by applying paint to canvas is to unravel, unlock some huge inner truth about, you know, being, being alive, um, what it means and, what it, and what's the point of the whole thing. And, you know, for some people that can be done through being chairman of a bank or driving a train or, you know, for other people, they've got to write songs or paint pictures.